Good morning, good morning. <coughs> grab some coffee if you haven't already and grab a seat. <coughs> You're fine. Hi, Thomas Well, good morning. Thanks for coming and being a part of Harmony Spring Sunday Gathering here. I am Pastor Joel Engman, the uh, lead pastor of this crazy group of people. So, welcome. Uh, if you're joining us online, a special hello to you. We'll turn around and take a minute and wave at the camera back here. Hello uh, to all of our folks who are joining us online from wherever you are. Thank you, thank you. If you're here, <coughs> Boy, it's a good thing I'm not preaching today because I'm about to lose my voice, I think. I don't know, so we'll see how things go. Uh, if you're joining us here in-house or online, you can follow along with everything we're doing at harmonysprings.org slash online. You can get the order of service. Uh, if you're special, you get a printed copy of it, but, uh, you know, it looks like this. But you can look at it online. Follow along with our order of service, and today... We are continuing our Unsettling Lent series based on the devotional by the same name that we've been distributing and inviting you to read and participate in as we journey towards Easter. Today we have a special, special guests with us. We have uh, Reverend Chris and David Eggert who are here uh, to represent God Before Guns, the organization that we've been talking about here for the last few weeks that we've invited you to come. After church today, we have a lunch, lunch in that's provided. You're welcome to stay. If you would like to make a donation uh, towards the lunch in, all of that money is going to go to support God Before Guns, so you can uh, do that for sure. If you didn't bring cash for either Girl Scout cookies or lunch, it's totally fine. Uh, I cannot buy you Girl Scout cookies because I also don't have cash right now, uh, <laughs> but somebody may, but you can stay for lunch. We'll get you fed one way or another, so uh, stick around afterwards. And of course, uh, stop by and support our young women entrepreneurs back there uh, selling those Girl Scout cookies. I'm not gonna tell you the price because with inflation, uh, it's crazy these days, but uh, stop back at that table and grab some of those. All right, I think we got everything. If you're joining us online, you know the drill uh, that we take communion here every Sunday at Harmony Springs towards the end of the service. We'll invite folks to come forward and receive the bread and the cup. If you're at home, grab bread and juice and out of your fridge and or cupboard and you can participate along with us uh, during that time together. Very good. When I came in today, uh, maybe when you walked in through the doors, you were just hit with the flurry of activity and young people that we have. So uh, it's a good thing, but also to, I took a step back for a second to take it all in. Uh, so I know we have kids here. Uh, so if the kids wanna come forward and come down to have a chat with me for a minute, I would welcome you to come and do so. So come on down, kids. Oh, Mr. Landon. Good morning, good morning. All right, good morning. He'll make his way around, Sarah. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. All right, <clears throat> children, I'm losing my voice, so I'll try to make this brief and quick, but check this out. Last week, I had you go look out the window. If you were here last week, do you remember what we were looking out out there? Looking at? If you weren't here, that's no problem. We, I'll, have you, I'll have you go over there again, maybe. But uh, So last week, I had you look out the window, and there was a couple of posts that were in the ground with a like flat top on it. Do you remember that if you were here last week? Okay. Uh, if you don't remember last Sunday, it's fine. None of these people remember my message from last Sunday either. So. <laughs> oh, Mr. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, guess what? I didn't even know this was happening when I showed you that, but the, we had a friend of ours at the church, a friend of Mrs. Hibbs, who's teaching the class back there. He was building, what was he building that we talked about last week? Do you remember what he put out there? I don't remember what I ate from, okay. Yeah. Well, well yeah, Mr. Raymond. Yeah, yeah, tell us. You gotta turn the mic on, tell us. All right, turn the mic on. 
got to open it. Oh, it's on there. Yeah. What is it? Tell it. Say it loud. A little library and a little pantry. A little library and a little pantry. All right. So last week we had a couple of posts out of the ground, and now the little library and the little pantry are there. Do you want to journey with me over and take a look? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mr. Donovan, do you want to come over here and look out the window? Do you guys want to come with me? Come on. Let's go. There's no bells out to touch today. Good thinking, Debbie. Thank you. All right. Look out there. What do you see? Did you see it when you came in today? Yes. See those? Little, they look like two little houses. Do we have a door missing? Oh, geez. We keep trying. We keep trying. While we try to put some heavy magnets on it, but it gets super windy, especially yesterday, right? Yesterday was a good trial on whether our magnets were going to hold, Wally. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you see these around. Let's go back over here now that we've seen it. Come on back. <laughs> Here we go. Very good, very good. All right. <laughs> so here's my question. Now that you've seen all that, How do, you, how do you think, we had a friend who built that for us. What do you think that looked like when he first bought all the materials? What do you think the materials looked like? <laughs> Sticks, wood, yeah, absolutely. What else does it take to put that together? What else do you think? You can use, use the mic so people on our, watching the online can hear us. A glass door. A glass that's, door, that's right? Tiny. There's probably some glass involved, some paint, what else? Nails. Nails, yeah, there's nails and screws in there. We realized with the wind, we got to put some heavier screws in. What else do you think would take? Hammer. What? Hammer. A hammer, yeah, you got to use those tools, right? To put it together, <clears throat> to put it together, you had to use a hammer, probably a screwdriver, a screw gun, and then a paintbrush, right? That kind of stuff. It took a lot of work to put that together. And... Yes, yes. People that can do that kind of thing are super special because they, what, you know what they can do, and maybe you've done something like this. Have you ever built something with, with materials like that? They can just order all the materials and see it, and in their minds, they can see what they want to build. Sometimes they use a plan or a blueprint. Then they put it all together. These people are amazing because they can put it all together and know exactly how to put it together in the right way to turn all those materials and paint, paint brushes and hammers into that, yes. Just like cabinets. Cabinets? Yeah. 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 People build all kinds of cool things, don't they? They do. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Joel made some more coffee this morning. All right. So here's my question for you. If, if we had a guy who knew how to build such a great thing out of all those materials, what can we do to help support that great project that we've been working on now? What, is the, what do those little libraries need? They need books, yeah. Do you have any books at home that you would like to share with other people? All right, so next week. Stop, stop. Okay. So next week, you got to bring in some books and maybe some canned goods, things like that. And then when people want to borrow a book, they'll know to come and stop by. And if they need a little bit of extra food to help feed themselves and their family, they can come over there also. And if you've got some extra, you can put it in there. Sure, absolutely. Tell us. Yeah. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. So listen, we're going to keep on supporting the good things we're trying to do, and we're happy. All these people are happy that you all did a fundraiser to help build all that. 
You bought the materials. We had a friend who knew how to put them all together. He built them, and now we need your help again. You gotta, if you got a book that you really love, you want to share with somebody, bring it in. Bring it in next week, and we'll put it in there, okay? All right, does anybody, I want to ask you if anybody wants to say the prayer today. All right, Mr. Casey. No, that's not a prayer, that's a cat. Are you going to say, will you say an actual prayer for us? All right, here we go, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for kitty cats. <laughs> and our bottles and sisters and, and walks. And chickens. <laughs> how about how about say and thank you for people who can build things like little libraries and, and people who build stuff. All right, finish it up. Libraries. Amen. Amen. All right. Yay! All right, you all can head back in and now. You've got. Yeah. As we continue our worship, uh, we remember um, the winds yesterday and the, um, the tornadoes that ripped through Alabama, Mississippi, and we lift up all those that um, have perished um, in, the, in the storms and those uh, who are grieving the losses of homes and the devastation. So we lift them up in our prayers today as well as we continue to remember Ukraine and uh, the violence against them there as we pray peace around the world and even our own conflict in Iran. So as we lift up prayers for all people and all nations and also our own congregation, remember today uh, we are lifting up um, God before guns. And we're grateful to have Pastor Chris here with us today to speak to us. And um, what I have for prayer today is a prayer written by a Lutheran pastor by the name of Joanne Inquist, Inquist. And uh, hear the words of this prayer as we pray together. Let us pray. We pray, Lord Jesus, for those who have died by gun violence, those who mourn deaths of family and friends, 
aching with sorrow, we grieve this pain, death, and surrender, Lord, surrender to your care and help. We lift up in prayer deaths and fears of death rampant in schools, homes, and the workplace. Marching for their lives, the young awaken us to action. Lord God, we pray for all victims as we remember, Lord, mass killings in places of prayer, synagogues, mosques, and churches. Listening, dear Lord, to us, listening at last, we listen to them. Lord, help us, raise us up to face the horror. Help us, loving God, to end violence in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue, uh, we continue our prayers for Pastor Joel and his family, Emily, and, and children as they travel this week coming. And blessings on your travel. And uh, Pastor Chris, prayers for you and your beloved husband and family as you bring us the message today. Hear from the word of God from Micah 4, verses 1 through 5. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and the peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken, and the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us give a warm welcome to Pastor Chris as she comes forward for the message. Well, good morning. Um, I have to say um, that I have used the word cacophony in sermons a lot of times, but I don't know that I've ever experienced cacophony in quite the same way as I did when I walked into this building this morning. <laughs> And I say, praise God for that. That was so exciting. And I mean, there were cookies being sold and kids playing and, and the choir was somehow up here rehearsing. <laughs> with all of that behind them. And I mean, I really understand now, make a joyful noise unto the Lord because you all are and you ought to give yourselves a hand for that. Um, just a word about my stole. Um, I wear this orange stole every time I preach on the issue of gun violence. As you may or may not know, orange is the color of gun violence prevention. And that started um, several years ago now uh, when a young woman named Hydea Pendleton, who was a teenager on the south side of Chicago, was shot in a random drive-by shooting, uh, caught in the crossfire in a park in Chicago. It was just days after Hydea had performed with her marching band for Barack Obama's first inauguration. Well, her friends, a uh, while later, uh, did a memorial uh, celebration of Hydea's life, and Hydea's favorite color was orange, and so that was all orange. 
But then you move on beyond that. What color do hunters wear when they want to be kept safe? Orange. So orange has become a color of the movement. So that's why I wear. This stole was um, handmade by an Episcopal priest in Euclid, Ohio. You'll hear more about her later. She's an ally of ours, and she has made these stoles for um, I don't know how many clergy people across the country. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Thank you, uh, Debbie McDonald, for the invitation to be here today and for, uh, for filling us in a little on what the work that you've already started. And um, you're off to a really good start. So we, we hope that today we can help guide those efforts, that we can answer some questions for you, and maybe challenge you a little bit beyond your comfort zone. That's sort of what we do. Um, so that said, <laughs> we're going to dive in. On any given day in our country, 130 people will be killed by gun violence. Do the math, that adds up to 48,000 deaths a year and the numbers are rising. On any given day, more than twice that 130 people are injured by a gun. Ohio's gun deaths are rising too, and they are rising at a faster rate than the national increase. Someone dies at the wrong end of a gun in Ohio every five hours. While our legislature continues to pass laws like stand your ground and permitless carry and communities like Cleveland or Green or Akron cannot legally pass stricter legislation of our own. On any given day, there is at least one mass shooting, at least one. By the definition of a mass shooting that at least four persons are shot, not including the shooter. And yet for as frightening as that toll is, that accounts for only a small percentage of the daily toll. On any given day, more than half of these deaths are suicide. And I, I pray for you if this has been an issue in your family, for an attempt by gun is almost always a fatal one, where any other attempt by any other means often is not, and people can get help and go on to live their lives. On any given day, Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed by a gun than anywhere else in the world, a gun homicide. And homicides disproportionately involve people of color. Black men who make up just 6% of the population account for more than 50% of all homicides. And unarmed black men are five times more likely to be shot by police. On any given day, in domestic violence situations, domestic abuse situations, women are five times more likely to be killed if their abuser has access to a gun. And a woman who has a gun in her home, sadly, is more likely to have it used on her rather than for her to be able to use it for her own protection. And on any given day, firearms are the leading cause of death for children. Having moved into first place ahead of car accidents and childhood cancers. God Before Guns every December holds a vigil, and we remember all gun violence victims for the year, but most especially those young persons who have died in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland area during the year. We read their names, we have their photos on the large screen, some are just babies. Most are teenagers. We light a candle. This year we read 44 names, the most ever. And that's Cuyahoga County, but I know that Stark and Summit counties are also seeing an increase in gun deaths. There is no place in America that is not affected. On any given day, it's estimated, estimated because there is no national gun registry, that guns outnumber us at over 400 million but only around a third of Americans, adults, 
say they own even one gun. And just about 40% of American households have a gun. So it seems the loudest voices must have the most guns. Now I'm going to stop there with the numbers. There's plenty more on our website if you want more. And I'm going to stop there with numbers because I don't want you to leave here today thinking that there's nothing that we can do. We must not believe that there's nothing we can do. Because wasn't it Jesus who said, for with God all things are possible? There is that passage from Philippians that says we can do all things through him who strengthens me. So what are we going to do about it? Well, you might expect that we have a few suggestions. At God Before Guns, we believe that people of faith, not just Christians, but people of faith, can and must lead the way. A little about us. It was 10 Advents ago that I preached my first sermon specifically about gun violence. It was the third Sunday in Advent, that, that Sunday when we light the candle of joy. But two days before that, a gunman shot and killed 21st graders at Sandy Hook Elementary School just after they had arrived for the morning. Well, on Saturday morning, with tears falling on my keyboard, quite literally, I deleted what I'd originally planned to preach because those words were not going to work. Sadly, I didn't have any other words. And then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit sent me a memory of a book that I had read aloud to my three children growing up, Maybe you know it. Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I see some heads nodding. Well, just very briefly, Alexander's like a first grader, and he wakes up in the morning and everything goes wrong. He drops his sweater in the sink and it gets wet. He doesn't get a prize in the cereal box. He has to ride in the middle on the way to school and he gets car sick. I mean, the day just is horrible. Well, that memory came to me, and I said that Sunday, I began my message with, that's the absolute worst stuff any first grader should ever have to deal with. That stuff. Our children deserve so much better from us. Now, we didn't realize it at the time, David and I, but we were answering God's call to do something. And together with others who just started gathering on a Tuesday night at the church where I was serving at the time in Cleveland Heights, well, that something was the formation of God Before Guns. We envisioned then, and we still to this day, 10 years later, we envisioned that our country, because of our faith in God and our faith in each other, will elevate the sanctity of life above the fears that are causing us to arm ourselves against each other. So what are you going to do about it? Well, church, you are already on your way. You invited us here which means you've refused to take the easy way around a tough conversation, the easy way being, oh, that's just too political. We can't talk about that on a Sunday morning. Well, gun violence has been politicized. I won't argue with that. But it is not solely a political issue. It's also a public health crisis. And our take at God Before Guns is that it is a sanctity of life issue. And so a faith-based response to it is required. Because if we as people of faith do not stand up for and speak to issues about life and death, how can we expect anyone else to? I mean, we have the commandments. The commandments that say we cannot worship both God and guns. 
hence our name, God be for guns. We have the sixth commandment that says we mustn't kill. We have the Sermon on the Mount. We're supposed to live that. We have the great commandment that says we're to love God, love ourselves, love our neighbors with all our hearts and our souls and our minds, and I think that means we're not supposed to shoot them. What can we do? During this Lenten season, you're almost to the time when you're going to hear the story about Peter pulling his sword to defend Jesus. And what did Jesus do? Jesus rebuked Peter, saying, if you pick up the sword, you will die by the sword. And then what did Jesus do? He healed the man that Peter injured. Shane Claiborne, who's a partner of ours in this work, says that the early Christians in the early centuries, they believed that when Jesus disarmed Peter, he disarmed every Christian. Well, Harmony Springs, God love you for working your way through unsettling Lent this year. Now, I don't know if you remember Day 18, and if you haven't read Day 18 yet, go back and read it. But Day 18, you read this passage from Micah. And there was a devotional that was also titled Beating Guns. And you read a story about a blacksmith named Mike Martin. And if you stay for lunch, we'll tell you more about this modern-day prophet. But first, let's look at this passage from Micah. Micah's a prophet. And prophets, by their very nature, are not about the status quo. Prophets, by their very nature, make people unsettled. And Micah's particular prophecy is about bringing peace to all of God's creation. And Micah says this peace, when it comes, will be universal. He talks about the different hills. Well, the different hills are us and all our differences, but there is this mountain that rises above those hills, and that's where we will find a path to God and ways to peacefully coexist. And Micah says that this peace will be achieved through the relationships that we build with each other. And Micah says that peace will come only through transition, and transformation. That's the tough part. We'll have to make significant changes for this peace to come. But we are people of faith. And I know you specifically are people who have gone through a whole lot of changes. <laughs> and to quote Shane Claiborne again, faith refuses to accept the world as it is, and insists on moving the world towards what it should be. Transformation is the literal and the figurative melting down of weapons to transform them into life-giving instruments. Life-giving instruments that you could use in your garden out here. More on that at lunch. We brought examples for you to see and touch. And finally, Mike, Micah assures us that this peace, with this peace will come safety and security. And he uses the imagery of sitting under a fig tree. And by using a fig tree, he's saying that this peaceful life will be found everywhere, in all spaces. Not just in our tightly secured homes with weapons at the ready, not just inside church buildings if you lock the doors after people arrive, but everywhere. Oh, may it be so. Now, I confess that this work can be grueling. When we started this work 10 years ago, I used to say on any given day, 88 people were killed by a now I said 130. But I have failed this morning. If you do not also hear through my voice a message of hope. Like, 
I'm preaching, and you're listening, and that space between my voice and your ears, that's the place where the Holy Spirit allows us to understand each other. It, uh, it, it's a place where the ideas can transform into more than just thoughts and prayers. And that Holy Spirit space, well, that can lead us to action. And that space is always a place of hope. What gives me hope? You do. We are Jesus followers. And we have promised to live his example. And the Jesus we follow didn't shoot people. He fed them. What kind of gun would Jesus carry? He wouldn't. <laughs> what children's lives would Jesus be willing to sacrifice to the gun lobby? Not a single one. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of heaven begins to such as these. And they weren't his children. They likely weren't even the children of the 12 disciples around him. Jesus meant all children. The Jesus we follow said again and again and again and again, do not fear. And I refuse to believe that God has somehow had a change of heart and now intends for us to be so afraid of each other that we must be armed against each other at all times in all places. That kind of talk is just not Jesus talk. You follow that, Jesus. I know that you do. And you are learning how to use your voice and your space indoors and at the Harmony Grows Garden when it's spring. You're using your space and your voices to be a public witness against the violence. You're working for positive change in our country and the beloved community that you serve. You bring me hope. Amen. We continue our worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we look also, as uh, our preacher this morning suggests, that we look to Jesus, at all times looking to Jesus and also the Word of God, 
Um, the word of God that also helps us from Psalm 121 before we go to communion. I will lift my eyes to the hills from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He who keeps you will not sleep. Behold, he who keeps you will neither slumber nor sleep as we serve a watchful God who knows our frame and knows that we are dust and knows all that we need. We lift God up today as a King of kings and Lord of lords who is with us now as we celebrate the Lord's presence with us. And the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. This he said do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after dinner, Christ took the cup and poured it out for his disciples and reminded them, as he does us, that it is often as we drink of this cup and eat of this bread, we do so in remembrance of Christ. This, my friends, is a table set by God, not ours, God's table, and all are welcome. You know it well here at Harmony Springs. In a few moments, we'll invite you to come forward and to receive these elements that remind us of who Jesus is and the kind of table Jesus sets. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's come together in prayer. Dear Creator God, as we approach the Lord's table, let us be more concerned about filling the local food pantries than filling safes with guns and ammunition. Jesus made an ultimate sacrifice for all of us. May we acknowledge the broken body, the shed blood that Jesus suffered. God, you have a plan for us. Tune us in to what it is. Servanthood is what our Savior was about, and may we follow that way. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 My friends, the table is set. We invite you to come forward and to receive. Would you come?
As we bring things to a close this morning, first of all, I want to thank you, Chris. Uh, come back anytime. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you. Uh, what a challenge and perfectly fit with uh, Sundays we've been talking about here these last few weeks. We do need to be unsettled more often than we like to admit. Uh, and we have been doing that and today again. Uh, I think my friends today is we heard a call to action, and I know we've gotten started, and I want to invite you to continue that conversation and be involved in that work that we are investigating and doing here at Harmony Springs by staying for lunch, make a donation, don't make a donation, just eat, it doesn't matter, and hear uh, from Chris and David about their work uh, turning guns into gardening tools. What a great uh, image that is. And Harmony Springs, we're like the perfect setup for that uh, with our garden right out here, right? Uh, so I could envision someday soon, let's turn some guns into some gardening tools and use them in our own garden and feed people instead of hurting people. Uh, wow. I think if we can get there, we will be well on our way to doing the work of Jesus in the world, won't we? Uh, and that does my heart good. My friends, a few things I want to share with you that you can be involved in as we journey towards Easter here. Uh, Debbie McDonald reminded me that we have a 12-hour prayer vigil that you can participate in uh, on Holy Saturday, that Saturday right before Easter. There's a sign-up sheet at the reception desk, uh, Donna's desk back there. We also are doing... Uh, a creative Monday Thursday service, which is, of course, the Thursday right before Easter. We are going to uh, offer communion, and Pastor Kim is going to do a devotional. We are going to eat some spicy and non-spicy food. Uh, we have a pro-Indian food maker in Canada uh, back there, and she is going to uh, make our eyes water with her spicy Indian food. If spice is not your thing, like it is not mine, uh, she's going to make some Italian food, too. She's good at everything. So uh, there you go. And then we're going to just enjoy being together like Jesus did with his disciples. And we're going to play some uh, another round of musical bingo that uh, was so fun to do last time we did. And we're going to bring it back again. So uh, you're welcome to come for whatever part of that you can. It starts at 6 o'clock on that Monday, Thursday, uh, that Thursday before Easter. Uh, come and enjoy dinner. If you want to leave after that, that's fine. If you want to stick around for bingo, of course, we'd love to have you to fellowship and have fun together. Uh, and, of course, partake in communion, which is what Monday Thursday is there to remind us of uh, when Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room that we recite and remember every single week here at Harmony Springs. All right, what else am I forgetting? Donna, any, anything else? Debbie, okay. Very good. 
Easter. Uh, I will not be here next Sunday. Next Sunday's Palm Sunday. Pastor Kim and our children's director, Liz Hibbs, will lead the kids in a palm parade. So uh, do your stretches and calisthenics beforehand, and then we'll march around here with the kids to support them. So thank you, Pastor Kim, for filling in for me while we're going on a family vacation during spring break. I appreciate that. All things, if all things work together, uh, I will be back for Easter then after getting off a cruise ship. So uh, I will be back on Easter. And then after Easter service is over, we want to invite you to stick around. Hopefully the weather will cooperate, but we never know here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we are planning an Easter egg hunt for the kids uh, out back here on the patio. Easter egg hunt for the kids and mimosas for the adults. So we're uh, going to have... You're going to have a good time either way. If the adults want to go out and find Easter eggs, I have no problem with that either. So, uh, you know, we're going to have a good time on Easter and celebrate uh, the resurrected Lord. Very good. Debbie, do you want to give us any guidance on the lunch or uh, that sort of thing? I know you just walked back in. Sorry. I... Um, no, you can just tell them they can go down both sides and help themselves. And the uh, offering tray is at the end of the line if they're able to uh, give some kind of offering. Very good. Okay. We'll let you get your food. Uh, Debbie said go on both sides, and then uh, we'll, and after everybody gets seated and gets their food, then we'll invite David and Chris to share a little bit more about their work in God before God. Can I say a prayer as we bring things to a close in our service today and for our meal? Loving and gracious God, thank you for this day that has been challenging to us and our souls. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you challenge us to be your hands and feet in this world and to promote love wherever we can, as often as we can, as much as we can in this, our beloved community. Thank you for how you bless us and thank you for the Eggers who have come here today and shared with us about their work. We ask that you might bless them and bless this food to our bodies that we might continue to do your work in this world. In your name we pray, amen. All right, my friends, go in peace. Eat well, we'll reconvene.